computer science. It's the field where everyone's making a lot of money, programming 24 seven and just having the time of their lives. I'm kidding, that's not computer science. Let me show you the reality. Computer science has its roots in mathematics. Now, the only reason why computer science came to be in the first place was due to lots of mathematics and their discoveries over thousands of years. In the second half of the 20th century, that's when things really started to kick off and the birth of modern computer science came to be. Now, Alan Turing is often coined as kind of the father of this modern computer science, and he developed the Turing machine. This, together with further developments such as the von Neumann computer architecture, laid the foundation for most of the modern computers that we use today. Modern computer science is really an impressive creature, and it was only possible because of the rapid evolution in many different fields, kind of simultaneously, but not really. We saw the invention and development of computer networks and the internet as we think of it today. Now, we also have hardware, the actual computers themselves, which also saw significant improvements and they're just getting better and better. And this, together with the evolution of programming languages and the software, allowed us to get to where we are today. Now, the formal definition of computer science is the study of computers or the study of computation and computational systems. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, it involves hardware, which is what the computers are made of. It involves software, which are kind of like the applications, the programs that run on the computers the systems and the many use cases. Now, what many people get wrong is that computer science is not just about programming. In reality, it's a highly theoretical field from the beginning with algorithms and data structures playing a huge part of computer science. And then we of course have the practical aspect as well, the implementation. And that is where programming comes in. It's where we tell the computers what to actually do. Let us just repeat this for extra clarity. Computer science and a CS degree is not just programming, it is theory plus the practical implementation. And that is the difference between somebody that knows the fundamentals of computer science compared to someone that just knows web development. They know a few programming languages, but they don't know computer science. Now, let us talk about some real world applications of computer science today. And you don't have to look far, it's literally everywhere. We have the internet, the world wide web, and all of the websites, software engineering, the programs, whether it's on your laptop, your mobile device, or a smart system on your fridge. We also have AI and machine learning, which is especially hot right now as well as data science and big data and even cybersecurity. And these are just some of the examples of subfields kind of that are built on the foundations of computer science. Now let's talk about jobs in computer science. And as it is a really broad term, as I mentioned, we're gonna take a look at a massive list of jobs in different kind of subfields to give you a good idea of some jobs that you can have for example, as a CS major, but also if you're just curious and you want to follow in the footsteps of uh, Alan Turing. Now, we of course have the obvious, you know, software developer or engineer. They basically design, develop and test software applications. Next, we also have the web developer and they are kind of similar, but they maintain web applications specifically. Those who design applications specifically for mobile are, well, surprisingly called mobile developers. And there's also data scientists, data analysts, and they basically analyze or use data to uncover insights, trends, patterns using different techniques. Now you can also become a machine learning engineer and work specifically with algorithms and systems to enable machines to learn and make decisions from data. Now, cybersecurity is also in really high demand right now with cybersecurity analysts and cybersecurity engineers protecting systems and networks from threats. We also have database administrator and they basically, well, they manage databases which store data to make sure everything works, simply put, of course. Somebody also has to manage all the networks as well. So don't forget about that part. And that is where a network architect or a network engineer comes in. You could also become a systems analyst and they basically design technology solutions for businesses. They kind of mix between coding, tech, and business knowledge. And we also have cloud computing, which is also integrated in multiple fields nowadays, but it's also a you know, standalone, rapidly growing field. You could, for example, work as a cloud solutions architect, and it's basically delivering computing services over the internet. That's what cloud is all about. Now, you might think that we're getting off topic here, but you could also work in UX as a designer, for example, to design the new Google interface or something. And they focus on user experience and the apps and programs that are kind of developed with the user in mind. That's very important. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that it's easy to get into UX. It is a pretty competitive role and field in general, but it is very exciting as well. And now with all the AI stuff going 
on, if you do have a solid background in computer science, you can also work in AI, whether you're developing models or applications or even in research. There's also the DevOps engineer, and this is a fantastic role for those who want to be kind of the bridge between software developers and the operations team. And you're basically someone that's trying to make sure that these teams communicate and collaborate well and that they don't attack each other and that things run smoothly. There are also many other jobs in IT, probably many of them that you've never even heard about. You could work as a consultant or in IT support. And finally, you could also work in video game development. I know some of you gamers could be really interested in that. Now, of course, it's not the same playing a video game as developing one, but still pretty interesting. And these are just some examples of jobs, but I hope it gives you a kind of an understanding that CS is not just about programming and there are many different kind of jobs that benefit from these computer science skills, whatever that entails. I don't want to ask for this, guys, but only 10% of you are subscribed, so why not subscribe? It is free and I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.